Hi everyone and welcome to the history lessons in Edupedia World. Today we are going to continue with the final lesson on the concentration camps of Japanese Americans during the Second World War. What we're going to talk about today is the deep impact of the events that we've been studying and how that affected the generations that were in the camps and those that followed. This is an example that we can extrapolate to see how traumatic historical events don't only affect those who live them directly but are passed down the generations and have impact on the society decades after they've happened. We have two types of uh, generational memory and historical memory that help uh, ourselves develop our identities as people, as individuals. I mean, just take the example of your family. Things that have happened before your birth have affected you in the way your family members have worked through those uh, those events and how they lived it and how that affected their behavior. As a society, we also do that. History is a part of our identity and how trauma affects society also affects the whole of society and our own individual construction. But let's go to our lesson. To get back in context, we have to remember that uh, finally, in 1945, American, Japanese American citizens of indisputed loyalty were allowed to go back to the West Coast. Indisputed loyalty. Do you remember those who had the who answered no in the loyalty questionnaires, they didn't get out that quickly. And the last camp was closed in March 1946. That took them some time. Also, it was not until 1948 that there was a law passed that was uh, going to provide reimbursement for property losses uh, to those who were imprisoned. But it won't be, and bear with me, it won't be until 1988 that the Congress will award the restitution of payments of $20,000 to each survivor of the camps to compensate the violation of their liberties. That took some time. And as we were saying before, I'm quoting a handbook on multi-generational legacies of trauma. The trauma and its impact may be passed down as a family legacy even to children born after the trauma. That is what we're going to see today. Because the people that came out of the camps were scared. They believed that their fellow Americans would never accept them as they were because they would always be second class citizens in their eyes because of their Japanese ancestry. And that will actually transmit some values and will impact the way the next generation grows up. There is a very clear differentiation between the generations of Japanese Americans during and after the camps. We have, uh, well the names, the technical names that have been used are made using the numbers in Japanese and the word say for generation. So, of the numbers in Japanese, the first ones go Ichi, Ni, San, Yong, Go. We have Isei, that comes from Ichi, plus Sei, Ni, that's two, plus Sei, generation, San, 
and so on. For the moment, they are only they've only been um, marked five generations, and the only ones we're going to be talking about today are the Nisei and the Sansei, and just briefly the Yonsei. This, uh, well, the Isei, the are the first immigrants that uh, had been born in Japan. The Nisei is for their children, and Sansei for their grandchildren, and we even have yes, the next. This special line for cavalry actually gives us the idea of the strong ethnic association and grouping that is around this uh, part of society. And it is really interesting to see how every generational group has its own characteristics that define them and influence the next. And although it's true that only the first two, Issei and Nisei, went to the camps, we'll see clearly how experiencing that in their lives marked their children. As we said, uh, we're only going to talk about two. And we'll start with the Nisei, the second generation. These are American citizens born from Japanese parents. And the Nisei have a really big role here because of the situation. It's the fact that they were in the camps during their childhood that made them be between two cultures they grew up as Americans, but they also had the Japanese roots from their family. And they grew up with two cultures and both were rejecting them at the same time. The issues are normally centered around identity. As we said, they did keep part of the Japanese roots in the identity because this roots in the culture was passed down from the parents with pride actually of keeping their origins but after the camps they also ended up searching to leave this ethnic group due to the social pressure and discrimination Frank Miyamoto gives us quite a list of the characteristics that have been noted to be more frequent amongst the Nisei. I quote, problems of interpersonal style, industry, respect for authority and cleanliness, acute sensitivity to the attitudes of the others and consequent restraint of his behavior in the effort to avoid disapproval, rigidity, a tendency to react inflexibly inflexibly to new situations, controlling emotions and emotional involvement, tendency to employ euphemisms and roundabout expressions to avoid emotional and provocative assertions, to dissimulate, that is, to dissemble and to make pretenses that things were not as they appeared, in situations where the truth might prove too self-revealing, and to strive for self-composture and cool in face of situations which might prove disruptive or embarrassing, and a high degree of sensitivity to the attitudes of others towards him, and a tendency to constrain his behaviour in order to minimise the risk of criticism. All this has been associated to this group that were children during the internment in the camps. And we'll see how this attitude affected their children. The children of the Sansei group. And actually, it'll be this group that will know about the camps only in adulthood. Normally, this was information hidden from them. 
late, well, afterwards, there will be uh, those that will demand explanations from their family. They will have to figure out things. And they're the ones that will eventually create the movement for civil rights and historical memory protection. Within this mindset, they will also try to regain their Japanese origins that had been devaluated by their parents. The reason behind this is that they wanted their children, uh, the reason behind uh, not having this background is that the parents wanted their children to be completely American to avoid discrimination. And at the same time, for the Nisei, this um, having complex from the Japanese origin and the superiority that the Americans gave to the culture had quite a contradictory effect. Remember that they were brought up with pride for the ancestry and now they were discarding it for their children. This attitude will give the sansei the impression of something missing while having this trauma transmitted down to them. It's, it was in the silences of their parents and grandparents or the evasive conversations about camps. They always used it in an indirect way and never going into specifics. There were expressions used like, oh, your grandmother made this skirt for me when we were in the camp. This abstraction of the term made that many Sansei children thought that the parents were talking about summer camps or scout camps because trying to know a bit more was tough because it was taboo for most families. We can see uh, a quote from one of the Sansei children how that affected them. I quote, I believe the difficulty of communication has taken its toll. My parents' silence gave me no way to express the inexplicable shame I felt for being of Japanese ancestry. Inside, I believed that no matter what, how hard I tried to please others and to fit in, as they wanted me to, I would always fall short. So they expected to achieve something that they just don't see a way of getting there. The reasons that later on were given by the Issei and Nisei to uh, keep the silence was that they wanted to protect their children and not impose the weight of such harsh memories on them. It's also linked to the feeling of shame and inferiority that they felt because of their ethnicity. Uh, in this fear of being rejected, they saw that they had to prove their Americanness and loyalty to the nation constantly. In their eyes, the fact of uh, trying to report or starting movements opposing the administration would have proven right to those that saw them as foreigners. The life conditions had been terrible. They didn't want anything similar to fall upon the children and grandchildren, and so they kept quiet. But, as we've seen, that had a negative influence that angered the children and grandchildren because they were cut off from their ties, from their Japanese roots, from their origins. Jenny Yamada uh, describes the feeling of her lack of roots like one of an adopted child, but it was the fact that she was deprived from her history that affected her the most. This deep inferiority complex of the Nisa actually has different sides. As we've said, that one of not belonging really to the American nation, 
But there's also the reflection of a traditional attitude in Japan. In Japan, there's a concept of bashi, that's divine punishment. And that means that bad things occur to bad people. So even unconsciously, it is believed that this conception would have given them an intuition of being to blame for the situation they were put in. And we cannot forget the obvious comparison with the Nazi concentration camps. Remember, we started off with this theme. Because, as we said, being in the same historical period, when asked about the um, situation in the camps, the prisoners of these camps would explain, and then they would be compared to the horrors of the Nazis, and they would have to end up saying, oh yes, it wasn't that bad. Some have later said, it wasn't bad enough to be able to complain about it. The influence of all this process will actually have a more positive influence in the Yonsei. They are the latter generations after the Issei, Nisei, Yonsei. The children of the grandchildren of the first generation. Okay, the third one. The positive attitude is that the from the anger of the parents because of their lack of information and the following discovery of the history and the camps that made their parents more conscious in front of difference of ethnicity and discrimination and that's how they brought up the children a quote from a yonsei they say they raised me to see other people with open eyes not to judge prematurely just upon race, nationality or looks, but to look deeper into the person and see that that one certain group of people are not bad. And on this more positive note, we finish the third and last lesson on the concentration camps of Japanese Americans during the Second World War. If you missed any, you can go back and watch again the lessons one, two, 2.1. I hope you enjoyed this long lesson. Thank you for watching and see you in the next history lesson here in Edupedia World.